Hello everyone, my name is Adam or Epo's Box, and welcome to another Windows 10 Tips video. In this video, I'm going to be going over the top 5 things that I think you should do immediately after upgrading to Windows 10 from either Windows 7 or Windows 8.1. First things first, as soon as you upgrade, you're probably going to be in an ugly 640x480 or 800x600 window, and you're going to be wondering why your monitor looks so janky. And that's because your previous version of your graphics drivers were not compatible with Windows 10. Both AMD and Nvidia have already put out graphics drivers compatible with Windows 10. Here you see Windows 10 listed under Operating System for Nvidia, and AMD already has it on their homepage. Get support for Windows 10 and DirectX 12 and more. So I'll put links to these main sites in the comment section down below, but you should be able to find your driver and find it for your graphics card. They make it pretty easy to find or they have automated detection tools that'll just find it for you. Download and install your new graphics drivers, then reboot. Number two is to check out your other hardware and make sure those drivers are working. Is your, inner, is your wired internet working? Is your sound working? Sometimes you'll have to check your sound because your default sound devices will change. So if you're not getting any sound out, it's probably because it changed your default speakers to something you don't want to use. Same thing with your recording microphone, you're going to want to make sure that is right as well. But then check your other drivers and go ahead and check things like your motherboard's support page for your computer and find out whether or not they've released new drivers for Windows 10. It would do you a lot of benefit to go ahead and update. Number three is to go ahead and install DirectX. You will still need this even though DirectX 12 is baked into Windows 10. You will still need the older versions of DirectX installed on your system. So go ahead and go to the link in the description below or just search for DirectX download. It will be a Microsoft.com address and download the web runtime installer. This will download a 3.9 megabyte file through the installer and install DirectX for you, which will be required to get your games working, to get things like OBS working if you use open broadcaster software, things like that. Make sure you have that on your system as you will need it. Number two is to check for application updates. It's probably been a while since you checked for updates to all of your programs and a lot of them have probably updated for Windows 10. For this, I will use two programs. File Hippo Update Manager, or File Hippo App Manager rather, which checks a specific set of software for updates and new releases. It is an installable file that you can either set to run automatically or just run it whenever you need to. I run it once every couple months. It's going to stick scan your computers for computer for what programs you have installed and then see what new versions are available. And as you can see, there are a lot of new versions of software available. That's because I just upgraded to Windows 10. There's a lot of stuff that updated for Windows 10. You'll want to download and install these updates. Just click the green bar. It's going to open up a new tab or open up a tab and it's going to download the installer. I'm going to cancel that because I already have these downloaded. Next, I will use Ninite, and this is for any software that doesn't show up here. And specifically, you want to check the boxes for the ru these runtimes here. So you want to make sure Ninite does its best to install Java, .NET, Silverlight, Air, and Shockwave. .NET will already be built into the operating system. However, you will want to make sure that it tries anyway, just to make sure you have things up to date. But don't be alarmed if it does throw you in error for it. Same thing like Skype. I want that updated. Chrome. I want that updated. What else do I use? I use VLC player, I use iTunes, I use Audacity, lots of other programs. Just make sure you are totally up to date and on the latest versions. This will be important to make sure all of your apps work as comfortably as possible with your new version of Windows. This is pretty key to be honest. Once you're done selecting the apps that you think you want to check for updates and more install new apps, if you see something new that you want, go ahead and click Get Installer. It's going to download a very tiny EXE file. Go ahead and tell it to download to your downloads folder and then run that EXE. Give it permission to run and it will automatically scan. Give it permission past your security, which was that black screen you saw for UAC. And then go ahead and tell it and it will scan the apps that you have selected for updates. For example, Chrome's already up to date. Silverlight was not up to date, so it's installing. Adobe Air was not up to date, so it's installing. Yes, there will be some crossover between this and File Hippo Update Manager or App Manager, but File Hippo App Manager covers things that 9.8 does not, and vice versa. So I always run both and then just exclude the installers from File Hippo that were already covered in 9.8. This is very good to make sure you are totally up to date and totally smooth rocking in Windows 10 before you even bother jumping on the ground. The best part about this 9.8 installer is that you can then run it whenever you want that same exe file. You don't have to go through and check the boxes anymore. You can just keep that same exe file and run it say once or once a month or once every couple months and automatically download new app updates for your applications and not have to worry about it. And number one of what you should do when you start up your new installation of Windows 10 is to go ahead and check out the store and check out all the new apps available. 
One thing you may notice when I launch the store is it launches in its own window. Instead of running in full screen metro app mode as they called it, it has its own window as will all quote unquote apps. And this is very neat and this automatically encourages me to actually check out and see what other apps they have because they're no longer going to be a royal pain in the behind to actually use. For example, there's a VLC for Windows 8 specifically. You're not going to want that. You're on Windows 10. There's a Facebook app. There's a Netflix app. These are really nice to have a dedicated app of and it's kind of nice to see. You can also see if you already have apps installed that you no longer need. You can uninstall them if you wish. For example, just for kicks, I'm going to go ahead and check out Modern Combat 5 Blackout. It's an Xbox synced game. It's free with in-app purchases but I can download it from the Windows Store and it ad added it to my download queue, which you can find up here next to your avatar. It's going to have a number and the download symbol, and it's automatically downloading updates for my Windows 8-based apps to make them compatible with Windows 10, but it'll also add new apps to that list as well. And lastly, as a bonus tip, the last thing you should do after an upgrading to Windows 10 is never open Microsoft's Edge new browser that used to be called Project Spartan, aka Internet Explorer Redone, that we don't give two craps about. Go down to your taskbar, right click it, unpin the program from taskbar, and never look back. Never, ever look back. There you have it guys, this is the top 5 things you should do once in upgrading to Windows 10. I do hope you enjoyed the video, be sure to smash that like button as many times as you can without undoing your like, so that should be one time. Be sure to also smash that subscribe button, stay subscribed to the channel, Just check out more videos, Check out links in the description. I'll see you next time. You've just watched another epic tech video from me, Epos Vox. Consider crushing that like button and subscribing to the channel. That way you never miss an upload. Also, check the links in the description to follow me on Twitter and Facebook and hit up our Patreon campaign for early access to videos. See you in the next epic tech video.